G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in the, one of those last videos I did, I looked at these things, dial test indicators. Mainly from the newbie's perspective, you know, and try and get newbies interested in getting one of these things because they're not very expensive and uh, if you buy Chinese and uh, they, they work perfectly fine. And I showed you these two that I've got uh, as, as an example. And this one here was my original one until I, I dropped it and caught my sleeve on the, on the end and she went down with a bang and it was buggered. But, but now it's not buggered, I fixed it. Uh, I replaced one of the ball bearings and the, they have little 3mm ball races in the pivot arm. How's that? Ball bearings of that price range, you know, we're talking about like uh, 20 bucks, under 20 bucks for one like this. And uh, anyway, she was cactus so I, and I hadn't fixed it, so I bought a mid-range one. I went up market and neither of these are from Banggood because in those days Banggood never existed. And so I got these from online stores, and, but they were stores, you know. And, uh, so I went to the next size up, uh, cost-wise, and also you get a slightly bigger uh, dial, which is good, easier to read, and uh, even though these work good, and they're both good as far as getting into tight spots, and they won't fail the chuck like a dial indicator will quite often fail on the jaws, which is really annoying if you're working in close. Yeah, so I went the larger and you know size and the old eyesight. It's not what it used to be, and uh, well, in fact, nothing's much what it used to be. And uh, anyways, you get older, you know, this sort of shit happens. So this one's mo now mobile. Replaced the ball bearing in it with, with a three mil one that um, I got from um, Craig Roop in Oklahoma. He sent it to me with some other stuff and. Blow me down if it wouldn't actually fit, you know. So I, <laughs> so I put one of those in and it got that going again. Oh, it's home. This is a homemade mount I made up. This is the original mount that came with that. And uh, these are really good. Anyway, cut a long story short. At the same time as I did the review on using these things and what they're good for, which is basically setting up four jaw chucks or setting up chucks per se or jobs. Um, I actually cracked 10 million views, which was the, the target I was sort of working towards doing YouTube. And I, I sort of decided I'd keep going after thinking about it, whether I'd just, you know, call it quits or keep going. I thought, oh, well, it's, it's interesting, but it does take a lot of my time up. So I'm plodding on. And I thought, oh, bugger it. As a treat to myself, let's get something upmarket from Banggood, um, as far as, you know, upmarket from Banggood because I've never ever done that I've always reviewed stuff from Banggood which is stuff I personally would buy stuff I can afford stuff that looks to be good value I've never gone to the top line stuff uh, that they offer even though it's readily available so this time I've sport myself and I'm going to look at the top of the line dial test indicator which is a, a Shea and it costs about uh, 55 bucks delivered in comparison to say what is this? one like this because they do have mid range and they have bottom of range a mid range one, range one from Banggood like that's about it's 26 bucks including shipping and one like this just that not the stand stands extra uh, one like that is um, 18 bucks I mean gee, how'd you be you know I mean the beauty of this cheap stuff is it works fine, perfectly good for, for home use anyway, hobby use. No problems, accuracy wise, everything great. The beauty is if you drop one of these, it's only going to cost you 18 bucks. If you drop your top of the line Mitchell Toyo or Stara, it's going to cost you a lot more than 18 bucks. And you'll be crying in your bloody cornflakes bowl for the next week at, at, at breakfast because you're going to have to go and buy another one. Chances of being able to fix these is pretty slim. I just got lucky on this one. So anyway, yeah, what had happened was this had bounced the spring off inside on the mechanism and also, yeah, ball race had lost its balls. And uh, if you lose your balls in the workshop, you're in big trouble, I tell you right now. So anyway, so let's have a look at the Shea and see what they've sent me. Right, well, here's the box. Now, before we open the box, I suppose I should show you 
what's in the box. So here's some screen grabs. First impressions of the unit are, it's very well made. I mean, there's virtually no, well, there are no machine marks on it at all, really. It's just perfect. It's as good as the quality that you get from a machining and cosmetic perspective as the top brand name units that I've used. Everything's great. Um, you get two sizes of mount, diameter wise you got a bigger dovetail on the nose than a lot some of them have especially the cheaper ones and the dovetails are fit snugly and there's not a lot of slop you know before you tighten them up so overall yeah the fitted the fit and finish is great the the nose on this is ball bearing but then again all of the cheap China, all of the Chinese test indicators that I've seen and used have got ball bearings in the in the pivot, and certainly everything feels good and is very reactive. There's no there's no slop side to side either, or you know whatever. It's good. It's really good. So yeah, appearances really look excellent. Now one thing that sort of got me interested in this was the length of the probe and it looked to be longer than my old one. So here's my old one and if you compare, I mean this is only an under $20 one, you can see that the probe is longer on the on the shay. So that'll be handy for getting you know into internal stuff and yeah, when you look at this, this is a cheap one. You look at the finish, you know, the machining. I mean, this is not a Banggood one, but they have one almost identical. And if you look at the photos, you can see the machining is not as good. You've got a small dovetail on top, display smaller. You know, but, of course, you know, for the money, you've got to, you know, accept some compromises. So, yeah, that's what you get. You get a better quality unit finish wise cosmetically but overall accuracy wise I don't think you'll find it be a lot between them anyway we'll test the accuracy out a bit further on okay I've got it set up now with the old test indicator on this lathe I was getting a reading of slightly less than 0 0.01 millimeter run out now this lathe is rated at maximum run out of 0 0.02 millimeter it's a Chinese lathe so that's less than half of the stated run out which is pretty good for a cheap lathe so let's try it with this and see what sort of reading we get same setup turning in the same direction same point on the on the Morse taper It's basically the same. I expect that it would be the same because I said even the very cheapest of these dial test indicators does a remarkably good job. Certainly plenty good enough for home use. That's exactly what I got out the other one. So there you have it. Pretty damn good. I mean I expected that. 
I didn't expect there to be any surprises at all. The main benefit of spending the extra bucks is you're going to get a quality looking unit and uh, the feel good factor is going to go up enormously and that's what it all comes down to, doesn't it? Feel good factor. That's why some lays are better than others and feel good, yep, it's an important thing. As you can see, repeatability is perfect. There are no stiction issues whatsoever. And I mean, basic tests show that it works perfectly. And yeah, I, I'd have no trouble recommending it. I mean, it's, you know, it does what it's supposed to do and it does it very nicely and it looks good along the way. It's just a matter of whether you want to spend that sort of money and how it uh, compares price-wise to its cheaper siblings. So the choice comes down, do you want to spend the money on a really well-made, very nice looking unit with a good big display? Or do you want to spend your money half as much on a mid-range one with a lot smaller display? Because this is a 38 mil display and in Banggood Bearing in mind this is not Banggood, but in Banggood that would have a 28mm display. Or do you want to spend even less again and go to the small unit? And the small unit in Banggood looks pretty much identical to this one. Now, I use this for years and years and years. A lot done lots of work. Never had an issue with it until I dropped it. And as I said, if you drop any of them, any brand, the results are going to be catastrophic, generally. If they land on the probe, which they always seem to want to do, yeah. I'd be a lot happier spending less and doing more with uh, my money than um, shilling out over a hundred bucks on a brand name one. But it's a personal choice. And even the Shea is way, way less than brand name. So there you have it. Um, I am a bit interested in the mid-range one because the finish in the photos looks to be better than the basic unit. Although my poor old unit's even got a bend in the arm, you can see she's, yep, she's uh, dubious quality as far as uh, cosmetics go, but it works fine. And, you know, for home use, these things will do the job and they'll do it over and over. And I've had years and years of use out of these. This one's at least 10 years old and done a huge amount of work. So anyway, there you have it. I, um, I can't say any more than that. And certainly, if you want a real, a really nice looking unit that you can feel pretty confident about having, I think that'll be pretty good. And uh, yeah, it, it ticks all the boxes. Okay, that's it from me. Till next time, see you around. Cheers.